that's a bit of a squeak. Hello everyone, I've returned from my sojourn in Berlin and um, today I, we're, we're coming up to Sauen. Okay, calm down dogs. So we're approaching Sauen and um, I'm just making some preparations ready and I thought I'd share them with you. So I'm going to be collecting some of the sacred herbs that we can associate with Sauen and also I'll be showing you how to make a partial cross using rowan branches and um, I'll be collecting an apple branch as well because I have a little project to do. And then I'll just be chatting about the food that we'll be making to celebrate um, the dump supper at Samhain. So for now I'm just going around the garden to collect some herbs and to collect some kale. And um, before I do anything, I just want to say thank you so much to all of those who were kind enough to inquire about our well-being during the storm which to be honest was just a bit of rain but thank you so much for being so considerate it was so lovely to get emails and messages but anyway um i'm going to head into the garden now to get some herbs come on jim out of the way so there's the kale because we'll be making some colcannon which I absolutely love. So I'll be explaining how we do it. Okay. So aromatic, beautiful rosemary for remembrance because um, at Samhain it's a time for us to remember our ancestors. So I'll pop that in there. I'm going down to get an apple branch. So the apple tree to our Celtic ancestors was um, a magical tree, very much associated with other realms. Uh, Manon MacLear was the king of the sea but he goes to the island of apples that's where he lives and then if you read um, anything about king arthur he was taken to the isle of avalon which is believed to be at the foot of the tor in glastonbury and i'm just taking a branch from here because i do have a project anyway but at Samhain, the apple and the apple trees um, are very symbolic of that connection with the other world so, you know, there's a lot of people at Halloween will do things like apple bobbing, but apples, apples and their seeds can be used in divination, usually to divine who your next lover will be or who your husband will be. And um, you could do all kinds of things. You could stick apple seeds to your cheek and name them after all the young men you might be interested in and then the one that sticks on the last is the one you will the man you will end up with um, bobbing for apples is another very old traditional way of connecting with the other world because water as i've said before is very much a sacred element that is seen you know it springs up from the earth it comes out of rocks and clefts in the rocks and so it's coming from the other world into this world so it's very much a magical element as well and when you're bobbing for apples all kinds of things might happen so i've taken this branch because of its sacred symbolism and also because i'm going to make a little project with it but around here i have some artemisia some mugwort which again is very much associated with Samhain because it's a time when we do divination so this is my mugwort it's blown over in the wind it's gone into flower but we can take some of it and we can um, make tea with it we can it's a bit late for making tea and stuff because it's in seed now but nevertheless it's a very wonderful plant for divination so it's very suitable 
for collecting a tsawan. So I'll just take a few sprigs. Artem the mugwort is in the Artemisia family, as is wormwood. So if you don't have mugwort, you can use wormwood as well, which I have in the other herb garden. So I've recommended in the past to put this Artemisia, the mugwort, into dream pillows because it can help with lucid dreaming and um, that's a form of divination in itself. So it's a very sacred herb to be using at Samhain, a time to collect, to connect to the other realm and maybe it will help us to see our ancestors who might want to pass on some information or some wisdom or some guidance. So it's a wonderful plant to have to be able to use it at this time of year. Okay, so I'll show you the wormwood. It's this way. So here we are at the wormwood, which is another Artemisia. It doesn't, um, it's not so pleasant to take but it's worth giving it a try. This would have been the herb used to make absinthe, which led to a lot of people having hallucinations and all kinds of things going on with them. So you have to treat it with a lot of respect and use sparingly. But again, it's a, it's something, it's a herb that we can use for divination at Samhain. So I'm just gonna take a little bit. But even though, um, a lot of people think Samhain is all about the dead coming back and the ancestors. It is and of course the veil between the worlds is very thin and so yes our ancestors can come through, we can go through to see them but also we have to be aware that there could be vengeful spirits wandering so we need to protect ourselves as well and the wormwood and the mugwort can help to do that along with um, helping with divination but I also want to get some rowan branches because rowan is particularly very protective um, when it comes to, I don't want to say evil, but bad things wandering around at Samhain when the veil is so thin. So I'm going to get some rowan branches now so that I can make a partial cross, which is a Samhain cross. So let's get the branches. So here is the rowan tree, nearly lost its leaves almost. So I'm going to take a couple of these branches because they're overshadowing this little arrangement I have going on here. Let's see. I'm going to take this one. Thank you, rowan tree. And take this one. There we go. Thank you, Rowan Tree. Thank you, Rowan Tree, for your protection. Okay, so it's just about to rain. So I'm going to dash into the house now and start making the partial cross so you can see how it's done. Oh, come on. Come on, dogs. Okay, so here we are. Now then, I'm just going to put my basket down. So I'll leave the apple branch aside for now because that's another project I'm doing. And I'll show you how to make a partial cross. So it's a P A R S H A L. It's not partial or part. Its name is partial, partial. So I'm just gonna sn snip off the end so I've got a nice straight cross. And I'll snip that end off and snip these little bits off. 
So Rowan is extremely protective. It's well known to protect people against witchcraft and all evil doings. Now, I'm going to cross the cross. I'm going to cross the two branches like this. And I have some lovely red embroidery thread here that um, a lovely lady sent to me along with her book, which I will put in the box below. So red thread is what's traditionally used. You know, in the animal world, animals know that red means danger. We all know that. So this is a warning to anything bringing danger or bad bad feeling that you be warned you're not going to get away with it here. So I'm just tying these two pieces of rowan together with the red um, thread. And what I have here are rushes. They're nearly finished now, but there's a few I found. You could use straw or you could continue with red thread. So we'll, we'll, all you do is you just hold that at the back and we go over one branch of the cross, under the next branch, over, under, over and under, under and over. And when you get to the end, we're just going to hold it in place and turn the cross and start again. So now we're going over and under the next one and over and under that one and over comes under over under over not all about spirits and ancestors and the dead. Samhain is a time for celebrating the harvest and for giving thanks for all the abundance in your life. It's a chance to reflect on the harvests that you have gathered in, you know, on a metaphysical level. And that's why, apart from doing things like this, we're also using our apples to make lovely food for the celebration. So I will be carving the turnip. I'll be using the inside to go into a vegetable stew. Then I'll be making apple pies. And um, then we'll be bobbing with the apples. And it's just an a opportunity for family to get together and to give that thanks for the abundance. Okay, so that's the partial cross which will be hung up over the front door. Some people say it should be hung up only on Halloween night, but it depends whether you're following the modern day calendar or whether you're going by the astrological date. And in folklore, there's a lot of references to three day feasting before the three days of Samhain and, and another three days after, so it's nine days. So really just use your own gut feeling as to when you should hang your cross and when, when you're celebrating Samhain. So let's not forget the other herbs. So I did bring in some rosemary for remembrance because it helps us remember our dear departed. But also it's a lovely herb to use at this time of the year because it's an immune stimulant. And it's also very good for the circulation so it can help you to keep warm as we are heading into winter. And then the mugwort and the wormwood 
They're both excellent bitter herbs, very good for um, helping to reduce cholesterol and stimulate the liver. So our ancestors in the past were eating a lot of meat and fatty foods at this time of year for this particular celebration. So they're very beneficial to the digestive system when you're feasting, but of course we can use the mugwort particularly for divination. We can dry it and burn it and the smoke is um, one way of using it as well as putting it into our dream pillows. And then the cross has the rowan twigs which are very protective. And I've got lots of kale in here which I'll be putting in my colcannon which is a potato dish and all the recipes will be below in the box below. So I wish you all a very peaceful and happy Samhain. It's a fantastic time to um, give thanks and gratitude for all the abundance in our lives, for the sweet honey that we might have harvested and also for the, um, the seeds that are falling now that we can use to sow for the coming year. And that can be metaphysical seeds as well. What do we want to bring into our lives next year? Lots of food for thought, lots of food and wishing you the best for Samhain. So I'm going to carve my turnip now and I'll see you next week. So bye for now. I hope you enjoyed today's film. If you did, subscribe and hit the bell for notifications. And have a look at the website, danusirishherbgarden.com, for more information about us and about the herbal medicine courses I offer and the Wise Woman Way training. And if you go to the shop, you can find the books, the weed handbooks and other herbal goodies. And remember, we put a new film out every Sunday. So looking forward to seeing you next week.